Hello everyone, Giltar here with my own contribution to a collaboration of model kit reviews. Uh, now this is an idea uh, presented by TC012009 who is doing a review of the 1 to 100 scale Altizen, uh, Jumping Spoon 02 or Jamie who is doing a review of the 1 to 144 scale Altizen Noct and I'm doing a review of the 1 to 144 scale Altizen version Progressive. Uh, this was TC012009's idea. Uh, basically what we're going to do is offer reviews of the Altizen in three different model kit variations. Uh, to basically give you guys an idea of how the Altizen has been represented in model kit form throughout the last several years. Now to give you guys a history of the Altizen model kit uh, done by Kotobukiya, the very first 1 to 144 scale Altizen model kit that I'm aware of is the one that came out in uh, December of 2004 for about 2800 yen or about $30 American. It was followed by a uh, 1 to 100 scale Altizen model kit that came out in November of 2007 for 5800 yen or about $62 or so American. And then it was shortly uh, followed by that afterwards in the next month, December of 2007, by the Altizen Noct. Uh, now the Altizen Noct um, is a 1 to 144 scale model and it, it appears to be a recoloring of the 1 to 144 scale Altizen from 2004. Uh, instead of using red it uses like I think a dark blue and it also includes a sword or a, basically a katana weapon that you can use with a model kit. Uh, now the Altizen in terms of the model kits has changed I think fairly significantly throughout the last several years in the several variations uh, it has been brought to us by uh, Kotobukiya. And so hopefully this collaboration of reviews will give you guys some, uh, some insight uh, with respect to, uh, you know, if you do want to buy one of these model kits, you'll know what to expect. And I think that by doing these three reviews, it'll give you guys uh, perhaps a, a more clear perspective uh, in terms of uh, what each sort of generation of the model uh, of the Altizen offers. Now I'm starting off my review, which is a two-part review, uh, and it, in part one I'll go over the details and articulation, part two I'll go over the pros, cons, and my final thoughts. Uh, but I'm starting off uh, with a size comparison. Uh, as normal, I'm using the uh, high grade 1 to 144 scale, uh, high grade Universal Century rather, 1 to 144 scale RX-782 Gundam, and the master grade 1 to 100 scale, uh, same Gundam, but the one year war version. Uh, as you can see, the um, high grade Universal Century model is a quite a bit shorter than the Altizen, uh, but the thing is the uh, RX-782 Gundam uh, in the fiction is an 18.5 tall meter Gundam um, and the Altizen is like a 22.2 meter tall robot. So the way that they actually measure up is pretty spot on uh, and the uh, obviously the 1 to 100 scale RX-782 Gundam is taller but as you can see at the shoulders of the Altizen, it's nearly as tall as the uh, Master Grade. So it is a fairly large uh, model kit. Um, so that's something to consider for people who you know, be, for people who like larger model kits, that might be one positive point for you. Uh, now with respect to the history of this model kit, it's actually quite new. It came out in May of 2010, uh, just a few weeks ago, and it normally retails for 4,800 yen which is just over $50 American at current exchange rates, uh, which is quite a hefty price tag. Uh, now, this is a model kit that has integrated weapons, um, or rather it's a design that has integrated weapons. The Altizen does not come with any accessories that it has separate from it. Uh, basically, you have a revolving stake weapon, which is a stake or a spike weapon driven by explosive charges in this uh, revolver-like cylinder in the forearm. And it actually does have articulation that you can swing out the revolver cylinder and you can take a look inside for the details of each uh, sort of explosive charge. And it has rotational ability, so that's pretty neat. On its other arm, it has an auto cannon weapon, which is a, a triple barreled weapon, basically. Uh, the shoulders house claymore or heavy claymore pods, basically. And I think they're, I believe they're, they're basically like real world claymore weapons in that they, they explode and there's like little ball bearings or pieces of shrapnel, basically, that fly out and, you know, hit the target. And finally, it has for this sort of fin-like forehead structure, it's the heat horn. It's kind of like a heat weapon, I guess, from Gundam, where it's, it's, a, it's a weapon that heats up and allows it to sort of cut through or melt through uh, targets. 
Uh, and that's pretty much it for the, you know, the, the weapon components. Uh, again, this does not have any separate accessories. So let's get into articulation. Now I'm going to start off with the feet, uh, the ankle specifically. Now, Normally it has ankle armor that uh, basically conceals the joint here. Now unfortunately this is an extremely poorly designed part of the model kit and it keeps falling out so I'm leaving them off but I'm just letting you guys you know, know what it looks like. And I've taken the other ankle armor apart to show you guys um, how it's structured. Basically it's, it comes in two halves and on one side of the inside of the halves there's a rectangular peg that slots into a port on the uh, inside of the uh, each ankle. Now the only problem is it's such a poor design it doesn't hold in and if you try to manipulate it uh, it basically f pops right out. Now if the ankle armor was on it actually restricts movement. You can't rotate it beyond like this range and you can't really wiggle it beyond that much. Uh, now with the ankle armor off what you can actually do is do a full rotation because the ankle joints are on a ball joint that connect to the lower leg and there's also a hinge joint uh, on the ankle that allows like a really significant bend side to side if the ankle armor was on you would not be able to do you know this range of motion which is kind of a shame because the the, the one selling point of the alt uh is really the uh, version progressive rather is basically the you know the vastly improved uh, range of articulation according to Kotobukiya and with the ankle armor on it basically nullifies any ankle articulation that you would normally benefit from. Uh, now the next point of articulation in the feet are just the foot itself. At the midway point you can actually bend it that much which is really really significant uh, and the toe portion or the front portion of the foot can actually bend up just slightly and I'll demonstrate how you can use this in a pose in part two of the review. Uh, next up are basically the uh, sort of knee uh, articulation points, which is quite significant. Um, there, uh, it's basically a two-point uh, hinge joint. There's one above and below the knee proper, so you could actually bend it to a flush bend. Which you know, for for gunpla uh, enthusiasts, you know, a flush bend, what's the big deal? But first of all, this is for Kotobukiya's models, which aren't really known for articulation ranges. And secondly, I mean, look at the size, the bulk of the calf area of the mobile, uh, of the mecha design. Uh, it's just, it's so huge. It's impressive that it can actually do a full bend to the back of the thigh. Uh, now. For the hips themselves, they can go forward about that much and for and back about that much if the rear skirt armor is raised like that. Um, it has rotational ability not only at the hip itself but at the upper thigh, so you can actually rotate the thighs as well for varied posing. Uh, the skirt armor, the front two pieces of skirt armor are on ball joints, so they do have wiggling and, you know, as you can see, the ability to rotate up that far. Uh, the rear skirt pegs into a polycap joint. Whoops in the back, oh geez, everything's falling apart, uh, in the back there, and uh, as you saw, the uh, side skirt armor and the rear skirt armor are very touchy. Um, just really, you know, fairly shallow pegs into polycap joints, and just they easily pop out of place, so um, that's going to be something I'll be speaking more of in part two. Uh, the side skirt armor pieces uh, have some rotation and some ability to go up and down, but because of the bulk of certain parts, uh, it's just you don't get a lot of movement out of it. The waist itself has uh, normally um, restricted movement. It can only go about that far to the sides. But if the, both side skirt armor pieces are off, it has full rotation basically. And actually it's all in a ball joint, so you can have wiggling ability as well. And the torso itself has a midpoint where you can bend it up even further. Now, unfortunately that shows a gap here, but you can get the torso to bend like that, which is pretty significant. Oh geez, the leg fell off. Okay, I'm going to leave this off because I'm not going to bother putting it back on. Um, the shoulder armor pieces um, um, have basically, there, there are separate parts that they do have the ability to move, whoops, move like this to allow a, you know, nearly a 90 degree bend at the shoulders and full rotation uh, for the shoulders and shoulder pieces, they'll move along. Uh, there's uh, basically right under the shoulder joint there's a peg so that you have full rotation here if the armor pieces and the weapon pieces don't you know, sort of clash and get in the way. Uh, you have a somewhat greater than 90 degree bend at the elbow um, but not by much and there goes another piece. Um, the wrists themselves are ball joints so they have ro full rotation and wiggling ability. As you saw earlier, the revolver cylinder has ability to uh, basically sla uh, slide out and rotate. Uh, the Claymore, heavy Claymore missile pods can open up. 
The head itself uses a really interesting uh, neck joint, which allows good uh, ability to go up and down, back and forward. But the only problem is everything is so loose, and the way that you have to hold on to things to the model kit, uh, you try manipulating it, it just sort of pops and falls off. Uh, and as you can see, this thing is just basically it's it's like a you know, it's just coming to pieces. Um, and finally, the back of the shoulder armor has this piece here that can move back and forth. It's kind of like on a hinge joint. Inside, there's a polycap joint for it. Um, and you know what? That's pretty much it for articulation. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, look at this. Huh. Not very awe-inspiring at this point. So what I'm going to say now, I'm going to end part one of the review right here. I'll be back in part two with the reassembled model kit, and I'll go over my pros and cons and final thoughts on this model. Uh, thanks for watching so far. I hope you guys enjoyed it up to this point, and I'll see you guys very soon at part two.